Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and a happy sine die to you. Um, I'm going to be asking for a no today. Uh, there are indeed a number of really good programs and services that are in this budget. There's also a lot that is very concerning to myself and others. Uh, first and foremost is the, uh, you know, the lack of participation and inclusion on, on our side across uh, both sides of the aisle. Um, we've had some really good budgets passed out here in the last couple days that were unanimous because everyone was at the table and we came together. Uh, and while we had requests that were included in this budget, um, we've seen with the conference report that a lot of them were taken back out. So there's room to be concerned there. Um, I think one of the things that sticks the most with me in a conversation that I'll have with people back in my district is what have we done to provide them solid tax relief during these times? Mr. Speaker, we've, we've, we haven't. Uh, we can call things investments, but that doesn't make them so. Uh, the state now is spending more money than ever before while wa the average Washingtonian's income and spending power is shrinking. And that's concerning. And we are an outlier among states of our size that have not provided meaning, meaningful tax relief to these to citizens. And they want to know, when is that coming? We've had opportunities over the last three years to do that, and we haven't. And this budget doesn't do that as well. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm also concerned about our, our rainy day fund. Uh, the impending recession and potential uh, financial issues we may have down the road. Uh, this budget in the short term meets that 10% recommended average, but only because the ending fund balance required for the four-year outlook is there. If we take that out, then we fall woefully short, Mr. Speaker. We have about 14 days of operating reserves right now. The statewide average across the country is 40. That should concern us and it should concern all Washingtonians. We need a better savings account. So I'm gonna ask for a no because while we are saving less money, we are spending more money, and frankly, we've given no meaningful tax relief to people who need it most right now, and this budget fails to accomplish things that I think that should be in the interest of all Washingtonians. Please join me in voting no. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and happy sine die. I rise today to urge a no on this budget today, and it's it's really unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, because we just passed uh, in the last couple of days two other bipartisan budgets, and unfortunately, this is not one of them. This is the state's biggest budget, and uh, you know I have to also at the same time express my thank you uh, to the the Appropriations Committee, the chair, and and for for working on this and and for taking some of the ideas that we put forward, uh, but at the same time. I just have to imagine how much more uh, support this budget would have if we could come together and put together a budget in a bipartisan manner. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to say that some ideas from our caucus were adopted regarding special ed funding that were initially rejected um, wind up in this final budget, uh, funding for dual credit programs. Um, but there's, you know, at the end of the day, when we don't come together in a bipartisan fashion to work on a budget, it leaves too many of our, the members of, 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 uh, that represent the entire state of Washington out of the conversation. And quite frankly, I think there's too much of that goes, that goes on in politics today. Yes, there is a $2.7 billion surplus, more revenue than expected, but it's all being spent. And af as states after state across the country, Democrat-led states across the country are giving taxpayers uh, uh, refunds, this budget does not do that, and I think there's room to do so. You know, Mr. Speaker, we have a lot of talented members on this side, and they're not invisible. And what they can contribute to the state and this budget is worth listening to. You know, it was said yesterday by one of my colleagues across, from the, across the aisle that it's hard to get to work, hard to get to school, hard to get to daycare, and we should do more to give people a few more dollars. With a $2.7 billion surplus, I think we can do that. And unfortunately, this budget doesn't do that. Please vote no. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I am joining my colleagues on this side of the aisle uh, in urging you to vote no on this conference report. Uh, not because the budget doesn't do good things for some people. Um, it certainly does. Um, by spending 69 point something billion dollars, I sure hope the budget does a lot of good for a lot of people. And you did hear some of the good things it does from uh, folks like the gentlelady from the 43rd district and the gentlelady uh, from the 33rd district and the gentleman from the 11th district. Um, and Mr. Speaker, I want to highlight two other things that, that I'm pleased about this conference report where I see it being better than the previous version that passed off this House floor. Uh, as was already mentioned, uh, this budget, this conference report does dramatically better in special education. We passed that policy bill off the floor yesterday, and uh, it's funded in this budget. And I'm very glad that we uh, went to the position of the chamber across the rotunda uh, and increased special ed funding uh, much more quickly and dramatically uh, than this chamber had previously voted on. I also appreciate that this conference report brings down the spending level and increases the reserve level relative to the budget that uh, passed out of this floor earlier this session. Uh, however, Mr. Speaker, I don't think uh, those changes are nearly enough to justify uh, me voting, uh, me switching my vote from no to yes, and I hope uh, that I can convince you in the next minute and a half to switch your vote from yes to no. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this, the Democratic State Treasurer recommends that we maintain 10% reserves, but if you look at the end of the four-year uh, budget period in the balance sheet, uh, in the budget outlook, uh, we are below that number. Uh, spending uh, increases in this budget by about 9%, and while I appreciate that is somewhat lower than the 20 percentage point growth, growth rates we've seen the past few biennia, uh, that is still in line with the historical average, and might I point out, Mr. Speaker, that when spending has grown by about 20% of biennium for several biennia in a row, a 9% increase is still a vastly larger dollar amount uh, uh, th than it would have been a few years ago. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there is one thing that this budget does not do for all the people in Washington, and that's providing broad-based tax relief. Uh, yet again, Washington remains an outlier among states, um, e e even, even to the exclusion of states like California, New York, uh, Massachusetts, which just uh, approved a, a very large tax cut for its people. Washington remains one of the only states in the country that has not found a way to give, give the people of Washington broad-based tax relief. So yes, this, this budget does have funding for, for those who depend on funding from state agencies, uh, but it does not have the funding, does, does not have anything for the folks who fund state government. So Madam Speaker, as you've heard tonight, I think this could have been a little bit better budget had it been more inclusive. I appreciate some of our priorities are included, but you're talking about a few million dollars out of a $69 billion budget that our caucus had input on. We can do a lot better as we heard from other budgets, and because we missed that mark, please vote no.